My first video was filmed off of the webcam on my MacBook Pro in 2012. It was a laptop stacked on top of my textbooks, which I feel like is a really great metaphor for the priorities that would later follow in life is, you know, like YouTube over top of school. Evolve, develop gradually, especially from a simple to a more complex form. What's up? It's Lauren from the YouTube channel Lord DIY. I am a DIY and lifestyle YouTube creator and I have 8.4 million subscribers on YouTube and about 17 million overall followers. When I started YouTube, it was, you know, just to do something fun, something to distract me from school. And at the time, most of us didn't know that you could make money off of YouTube, so that was never the goal. It was really just a hobby and a fun outlet for all of us um, that eventually came with a small paycheck. I think my first paycheck was literally like $7.18, but that, that like bought you a sandwich back then, so like that was great. <laughs> Hey guys, okay, so today I'm gonna be showing you how to make this cute little daisy crown. A lot of creators have a moment where they have a viral video that just shoots them into stardom, but I was kind of um, a different model of growth. I think it was just the consistency and the continual growth and evolution of the quality and the actual content of the DIYs and also just bringing more of my personality to the channel through the videos, especially with the vlogs. I started vlogging maybe about a year and a half ago seriously um, every week. So that's kind of where I'm at, is that I feel like I'm at square one, that everything I do is a fight, it's a struggle to leave my house. I've talked about my struggles with anxiety, um, relationships, uh, breakups and new relationships, um, acne. It's not cute, but it covers up with makeup, which has been really good. This is just not a good, this is not a good angle. What was I thinking? My first brand deal was promoting the Divergent movie, actually the very first one that came out like five, six years ago. I remember when my manager called me and said that there was a deal offer for me and we had really just started working together. So, you know, I was not skeptical, but I was definitely super new to this. Um, and he told me that I'd be making $1,250 for a 30 second shout out. I just had to film something and kind of tack it on to the end of the video and they were gonna pay me that much money. Like I was living in a $700 a month apartment with a roommate. We had roaches at one point, like that was the level of of living that I was at. And at the time, obviously, I didn't understand that the audience, you know, and the engagement of a YouTuber is, is really worth, you know, a pretty penny. What would you guys say if I told you that you could win two free tickets to the Canadian red carpet of Divergent? Like, the red carpet, like, the real deal. There was one summer, I think maybe a couple years ago, when you're kind of in that sweet spot of two to three million subscribers where your brand deal fees are kind of attainable by a lot of brands. I had so many offers on the table from brand deals and you know some were a good fit some were an okay fit some were definitely not a good fit I think I actually did say yes to probably one more than I should have but I really had to take a step back and be like okay what would my calendar look like if I said yes to all of these what would my content look like if I said yes to all of these and it was you know a big eye-opener to see okay like the content the the organic DIY is worth more than this medium-sized brand deal at the end of the day and that's really what you have to kind of step away and think about. So with the growth, I really kind of took a step back to think about what I wanted my channel to become and what I wanted for myself as a brand and a personality and as an influencer. And that's really when I made the decision that I wanted to be more than just a YouTube video. So, you know, if YouTube goes down tomorrow, it's like, do I lose my house? How do I take myself off of YouTube and make it a long lasting brand that could potentially end up being a household name? So I linked up with a licensing agent who helped to partner me with some amazing licensees to put together everything from DIY jewelry kits to fabric paint to brushes to stencils. Um, I've done pop sockets and stuffed animals. We were really just trying to focus on finding the most fitting and relevant categories of products that I would be, you know, interested and passionate about designing and creating and that I thought my fans and followers would love. I think the goal right now, I mean, subscriber-wise, next up is 10 million. That's when, you know, YouTube sends you a big old diamond play button, which is really exciting, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, obviously, it's growth of your audience, so that's always encouraging. But I think the goal is to just keep continuing to find balance in business and personal life and to also, you know, keep finding collaborations um, that I think are a perfect integration with my brand and to keep making content that I love.